All right, bro. Suraj, welcome to the It's Not That Deep podcast, man. Man, it's been a long year. <laughs> when you started this stuff, I was right behind the scenes, and I'm finally glad to be on the podcast, man. Finally on the podcast, man. You've been uh, you've been behind the scenes for everything. You've mm-hmm. seen it all. You've seen it come to fruition. Mm-hmm. You saw me purchase all the equipment on yep. day one. You're yep. like, I don't know what this guy's doing, but I'm gonna ride with uh, it. Yeah, I was like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, but yo do do it just do it you gotta start you just gotta do it get started i that's appreciate what, you that's man. with everything for people who don't know you're my cousin yeah. <laughs> you're, been my, a long time. you're my cousin my my brother basically yeah. probably my best friend i don't yeah. really say that i don't yeah. really like we saying, never acknowledge it you we don't really acknowledge that it's no. just like we probably of all people spend the most time with each other it's yeah. just a reality it's definitely true man it's just it's just facts we get each other mm-hmm. most people don't know it because we're not like like not really hands around each other like hey this is my bro (laughs) it's just not it's just not what our relationship is but we grew up together man we really did bro from the from the like youngest ages of like playing mini stick hockey yeah football football cricket cricket. shout out to g1 sharma (laughs) beating the crap out of each other more me beating you up that kind of thing yeah but you know it's a little big bro (laughs) yeah just always had to big bro you real big bro (laughs) seriously but man this is crazy because we've been through so much man Mm -hmm. and especially this last couple years bro um mm-hmm. you know uh, i don't have to tell you but throughout this whole pandemic and all this madness um oh, man you and i are cowboys bro yeah for sure man we <laughs> we were fucking wild you, you honestly can't tell us what to fucking do no no like, you can't what to do man you absolutely can't because when this all came about look i'll be the first to tell you that i was actually a little bit scared i was like yo <laughs> I don't know what this is. They're yeah. saying that people are dropping dead. Yeah. They're saying the population's going to be... I'm just like... Man, you, you know what was up. We None of us knew what was going on. We were all confused. No one knew anything. All I like, hear about is Wuhan, some virus, it's airborne. I'm just like, look, man. Someone ate a bat. Now we're here. <laughs> like, someone said that. Yeah, someone said they ate a bat. So what happens after that you know we settle into it we start to learn more about uh you know the pandemic and everything that's going on and um you and i decided to do something that at the time was kind of not not met very well from friends and family no it wasn't with business or leaving uh leaving yeah (laughs) man uh, yeah you know what it was a Everyone's saying don't travel during the pandemic. We already know this. You know, keep people sp- safe, stop the spread, all this. But you know, it just comes to a point. Is like, how long can you can you keep doing this? Keep listening to this. Like, we were all on board. We have a grandmother at home. Mm-hmm. We we're. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't get a haircut. You know how much I like get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but man, we didn't go anywhere. You know, follow the rules. You know, didn't go anywhere. Yeah. But then you know, a year passed by. Mm-hmm. It's like what what is a man supposed to do? He's supposed to stay at home, you know, don't go outside, don't meet your friends. They're like, you know how you know, even my sister was like, yo, you can't even see your own family. And that's where I kind of drew the line, man. Yeah, it started to get bad because and I don't blame anyone in particular. No. You know, it's not their fault. It's no, the it's messaging. No one's fault. It's the media, it's everything. No and one's fault. I'm not gonna be on this podcast here and get into covid i don't i don't want to talk about that it's not about covid no but we're talking about something that's a little bit more our personal yeah reasoning was like okay look we gotta do what's best for us at Mm -hmm. this point yeah we're gonna take all the the proper safety and precautions and i'll get tested give me the pcr test it's fine i'll take your tests i'll wear your mask I probably won't social distance because we all know that's BS. No. But and, uh, <laughs> but we left. We left. Yeah. And at, at the height of the pandemic. Yeah. This you, was like, what, third lockdown, I think? This was last March, April? Yeah, this was March. This yeah. was March. We, uh, we decided to go. And, yeah. you know, we decided that we wanted to go in mm-hmm. like January. I remember yeah. specifically mm-hmm. we were sitting in my old podcast studio slash apartment. <laughs> yeah. And we were sitting there and we were just frustrated with the whole thing. Man, man. We were watching travel videos yeah. to, to get a hint of what it was like to leave the country, <laughs> man. I remember, what, what does a beach feel like? I don't bro, remember what a beach bro, feels like. Bro, you and I were watching a video on Istanbul where like bro mm. do we just go to do we just go to turkey go to greece are we just going to greece are we gonna go to turkey croatia 
let's just go. Yeah. And then we started to look into it. And because you and I, we yeah. got ape energy, which yeah. is, you know, for those listening who don't <laughs> quite understand what ape energy is, I'll give you a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a Webster dictionary <laughs> definition on the term. But a- aping or just being an ape is literally think about a big gorilla or ape or something <laughs> like that and just just going yeah, just just, just making things you, happen you don't think about it you say you want to do something you do it and you go and you go do it you don't think about the consequences you don't think about oh well what if x y and z you just go no you just do it and that kind of became the theme of our trip pretty much man. <laughs> just aping it <laughs> and we actually use that terminology often man, we didn't even plan this we just like we're going to Colombia. I don't even know what made us go to Colombia. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Yeah, so, what was it? Do you remember? Yeah, I, I do remember, remember because I remember we... It wasn't necessarily Colombia mm-hmm. that was where we were going to go to at first. Yeah. I'll be the first to tell you that it was like, we just need to get out of Canada. That was step one, yeah. right? Then step two was, okay, well... We wanted to go to like Greece mm-hmm. or, or Italy or somewhere I, like nice in Europe, I right? Think, yeah, they sh- they shut down Greece. Italy was, you know, what a lot of people got got got. Yeah, and, you know, it Europe was, was bad. Europe was bad. Europe was bad, and Europe was closed, mm-hmm. and straight up was not really an option for us. So, yeah. I literally, I'll tell you what happened. I googled where can I travel right now as a Canadian? Like, <laughs> you know, where can I go? And yeah. I looked through this list and it was an alphabetical mm-hmm. blog post. And I get to mm-hmm. see and I see Colombia mm-hmm. and I'm like, going to Colombia. <laughs> and I looked into it a bit. And yo, look, our level of knowledge of Colombia is basically narcos. That's all it was. That's what we knew That's about all Columbia. I knew. I knew it was more than that. Obviously. I knew it was a dramatization, mm-hmm. whatever it was a TV show. And that know? was the 90s exactly and it was even like even 80s late yeah. 80s 90s it, but i know that that's not the reality you know what i mean well, not right now not right now no but i'm like you know what man like let's just go let's go to colombia yeah. so we look into tickets we get we through air canada we booked the flights yeah and um our flights got canceled yeah oh yeah i guess a lot of people didn't know this because we kept this hush hush. yeah we didn't tell anyone about this stuff but... with, with air canada right it was uh toronto straight to bogota mm-hmm yeah bogota Bogota. (laughs) and so yeah it it was crazy because what happened was we just we you and i like literally we didn't Mm -hmm. consult anyone or talk to anyone we're just like we're going to colombia and we just yeah we just booked the flight and we're like okay we're going Mm -hmm. and uh what happened was basically oh man all of our friends and family and even you know, hey, no, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people yeah. were not happy about this decision for us to travel at this time. You know what? It was just like, are you sure you want to do this? Like, you're gonna get stabbed. You're gonna get robbed. You're gonna get killed. It wasn't. You're gonna get COVID. COVID. You're, you're gonna, gonna COVID. give COVID. You're gonna yeah. spread it. Yeah. And I, my logic was, look. You just took a flight to Calgary. Mm-hmm. Like, what how is me? that any different it's than not. me going to a different country? Like, I'll still, I'll wear your mask. It's an imaginary border, man. I, you know, follow the protocols. I'll do it your way. You want to do it? Fine, fine by me. I'll get tested. PCR Test me all you yeah, want. Yeah, good. I don't have COVID. Say, say less. We're good. Yeah, exactly. And so we went. You know, long story short, there we went, mm-hmm. and um, we had a lot of, a lot of like our own parents and mm-hmm. family like what are you doing yeah man it's, it's hard to explain because this we recently just started the the deep drip yeah. and it's just like kind of like what are you what are you doing man like what what's what are, what's going on Dude, where I are ju- you going i just bought a house yeah like like it was actually the worst time to possibly go yeah and that's what made me want to go we launched we launched to what two weeks before <laughs> yeah we did <laughs> we're idiots that's called aping <laughs> that's literally yeah. what aping if you want like a real life like application definition of what aping is that's what it is we aped it we just said we're gonna go and yeah. deal with all this later yeah that's <laughs> pretty much it you know respectfully i'm going that's what i said i'm like hey mom dad like you you've actually been a lot of places which i've always been jealous of because you've always told the stories this guy's got great stories i'm sure you guys know He's like, man, when I was in Bergen, I made this friend, yeah. we made these friends, we went here, yeah. we went to Italy, we were partying, we were yeah. doing this. I was like, man, I'm tired of hearing about th- this stuff. Like, I need to do this for myself. Something's missing in my life that I need to go see something. Like, what am I missing out on? 
everyone's talking about travel oh my god travel like you gotta manifest it like yeah. you know, it's yeah. like okay yeah but like i need to see for myself what's going on let's do it that's why i was so on board because that entire summer you know what i've been doing the past few mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. you know it's like eating dirt shoveling like just grinding ca grinding put your head in the trenches yeah. just work work make the money make the money but what else what else comes next like, yeah exactly exactly and so so for context you know for people who don't know like you've been putting your, your you've been putting blood, sweat, and tears and just grinding, making money, doing landscaping. Yeah, man. And that's been a great hustle for you it's while you're hustle. in school, yeah. while, while you're still mm -hmm. kind of figuring out that next step yeah. of like what you want to do with business, yeah. whatever. But I think travel is one of those things, bro, that like legitimately, like it's so corny. And yeah, I know I everyone know talks corny, about it, yeah. but it's like it actually does broaden your horizons, man. It is true. You become a different person when you come back. You, you step out of your little matrix. Mm -hmm. Just to make the cliche even more cliche, but you step out of your matrix, you you step out of all oh, your old way of thinking. It's like I need to change that. Like yeah. So, what do we do? We we go from it was like a five a.m. flight. We pack our stuff. We just came from launching Deep Drip, craziest like probably few months of my life. Yeah. That I've ever done. And we'll definitely get into all of yeah, that. We'll, we'll get into into all that after but like this is the most important stuff this is the meat and potatoes that everyone wants to hear yeah. you know yeah everyone wants to hear this we've been kind of like paused on this for a bit yeah but we really wanted to like nail this down like mm. we want to get this right we really wanted to show what happened yeah because a lot of people like they didn't think they could leave the country right that's the craziest part mm. about it all is that so many people thought that like you couldn't travel like like, it's like, like you physically cannot do that right Dude, now. When I got back from our trip, I went to get a, a gym membership. He's like, I, what are you doing? Like, what's all this? Like, whoa, oh, I just came back from Colombia. He's like, how did you do that? And I was like, what do you mean? How did I do that? <laughs> I, how? I, like... I, I, I searched up flights and I, I bought the flight. <laughs> what I'm are you dead. talking about, I'm man? dead, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it was right like i don't yeah. want to get into all the, it's not about the, politics the, the, the politics we're just COVID talking stuff. about our but, experience but yeah. man man are people brainwashed like i know yeah. i just said i don't want to get it but people are just so they're just so like anyone tells them you can't do x mm -hmm. they're like okay <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah all right good. fair <laughs> enough i don't need to hear anything else that's you it said. and like you and i are just not built that way and, and you know what that's fine it has like, to make sense yeah you have to like there are some things and we'll we'll get into all that for yeah. like when we came back and stuff yeah. there's some things that make sense yeah. and like you know what man for sure i'm not sitting here on no. this podcast no we're not knocking anybody for anything we're just talking about our experience and how we made the best of it exactly we decided that look the risk and reward mm -hmm. is like so skewed in our favor yeah. that like it's like bro what we're gonna get out of this trip yeah. is gonna be so much better yeah than any than risk of staying at home in winter winter like in the worst part of that winter was my biggest reason also for leaving was i'm done with winter but i'm also done with a, another lockdown man i can't do this like I, you and me know like we need to be active we need to be working out mm -hmm. like that's where the drive comes from the gyms are closed at this point for like six weeks and like or maybe like more than that honestly like three months at that point and i yeah. was just like look man this is getting out of hand yeah and at that at that time i was living in a little apartment i couldn't like build my own gym yeah. or do anything like yeah. there wasn't something i could do other than <laughs> remove myself from this situation yeah shout out to the three walks a day outside <laughs> dude we were taking walks it was so funny you and i were like fucking old people just walking and going just Going for like, yeah, just like a little, a little sad. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, um, man, so, so let's talk about like us leaving. Get, getting into Colombia. Yeah. So basically we land in Bogota. Mm -hmm. And right before that, I do want to get into like at the airport. Yeah. You and I did have a little mini like freak out. Well, where, yeah, we went to New we, York. Yeah. Newark, right? Yeah, we yeah. went into Newark and like this is where we leave Canada. Everyone's all masked up. Guys are wearing gas masks and stuff. <laughs> and like we were just like what's going on and then as soon as we land in newark everybody was chill everyone's like with masks down everybody yeah like, america was like open at yeah. that point you america's know I mean? like we're we're gonna we do us we're gonna chill we're gonna <laughs> we, we're good <laughs> so we get to newark but and and yo that's on our on our stop to go to uh bogota mm -hmm. and 
Look, you and I, like I mentioned, didn't do a lot of research on this trip. No, we aped it. We we aped it, just like we said. And at this moment, <laughs> what we were looking at was YouTube videos. Yeah, from DC Born Rob and uh, Columbia Frank. Columbia Frank, shout out to Columbia Frank and and, uh, and and DC Born Rob. And we were watching these guys' YouTube videos. And they're specific, like they're mm-hmm. for legitimately for yeah. people who are trying to travel mm-hmm. to Colombia. And so we're watching these videos and like, bro, like there's some sketchy stuff. Mm-hmm. So there's some videos of people getting like deep. Yeah, we're watching this in Newark Airport while we're eight hour layover. Yeah. We because had a, we we, had our flight layover. got canceled, remember? Yeah. So we had to get a new flight. We we're like, we can't take no for an answer. I'm not not leaving the country. Exactly. And then we're watching these videos and it, it was so bad because mm-hmm. every video that we're watching is like some negative thing about Colombia. Yeah, it's like, this, tourist, this tourist got killed. Mm-hmm. This girl got robbed mm-hmm. in Medellin mm-hmm. on a night out. This happened. This dude was a 6'4 linebacker and he got robbed. Man, and my I'm, anxiety was at all time 10 because it's like, don't get gut. Keep your hands in your pockets, man. You and I were like legitimately making game plans. Like mm-hmm. we were like, yo, I'm going to zip up this pocket. I'm going to keep everything. And like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But then we got there. Yeah, we got there. Oh, my God, man. Honestly, that was probably the best feeling I've ever had in my <laughs> life. Leaving Canada and landing in Bogota. And it was just we got in the taxi. We still didn't know what we were doing. We still didn't. We had no clue. No clue. It was like, what, 2 a.m. when we got no, there? No hablo espanol. Yeah. <laughs> por, por favor, yeah, <laughs> yeah and, no, and we're, no we're in this foreign country. Mm-hmm. We don't know the language. We don't know, like, anyone. We don't have friends there. Yeah. I don't have, like, usually yeah. when I travel, I'm e- mm-hmm. either with friends or mm-hmm. there's someone Dude, locally that I can lean on. We, we were so tired. Yeah. Like, we've been flying for, what, like, 16 hours yeah. at the time with the eight-hour layover? Yeah, yeah. And we finally get there, and we take the taxi. It's chaos. Like, it's just getting through, yeah. getting the taxi. Hermano, hermano, take our taxi with us. Come, yeah, come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and it was late at night, yeah. too. And, and this guy drops us off at our Airbnb, and we mm-hmm. finally get inside. And, look, we settled in, and mm-hmm. it was actually a nice spot. And yeah. I, I was actually kind of surprised at how modern S- 72 Columbia is. Hub. 72 Hub. 72 Hub, shout out. And, and I was surprised at how modern Colombia was. Like, I felt like it was a million times more beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bogota like, yeah. was way more beautiful than Ottawa. I was taken away by the air. The like, air the was air? just so pure. I was like, Oh, you're never, at a you're at a high altitude, so it's higher than like Denver. Was like three thirty five hundred feet. I don't That's, really know. Yeah, it's thirty like five hundred feet if you hike up the mountain. Exactly. Yeah. So like, the, you know, Bogota surrounded by these mountains and it's really high altitude, and yeah. like we kind of noticed it a little bit when we were walking up these stairs. Mm-hmm. But it actually took us a few days to kind of acknowledge it. I'm like, hey, yeah. bro, like you had a breath too. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, like he, do I got COVID? He's like, <laughs> exactly. We're just like, just walking up a normal flight of stairs, like wins you a bit more, but mm-hmm. otherwise you don't really notice the altitude unless yeah. you go on a hike or something. No. But like, I actually felt like, Oh my God, this place is yeah. dope. I really love it. It's super yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Very artsy. Yeah. This, that, and the other thing. And yeah. then, what happened is like I think on our second or third day mm-hmm. uh outside of our Airbnb we go out into yeah, we uh, walk we start walking we start exploring because we know nothing well that was the first yeah. day the first day we just go and, yeah. and walk around right mm-hmm. and we learned pretty quickly that people in Colombia generally don't speak English yeah pretty much they they speak is they speak Spanish yeah <laughs> they're just like we're out of our element two Canadian boys exactly we're just looking for a place to get some breakfast man you know yeah. what I mean arepas <laughs> it's just some arepas <laughs> but uh we're walking around man we're getting familiar we're getting acquainted with like mm-hmm. the vibes of like the whole like area I, and we we're just getting our uh, we're walking with our hands in our pockets we were we days. were scared i I'm even took lie. i even took off my earrings man i feel so foolish saying that now <laughs> but now looking back at it i'm like wow we're two large brown dudes mm-hmm. why what were we worried about yeah. what well, six two six one like six yeah. feet. like what were we worried about man nothing man like mm-hmm. honestly look I, this is a pure disclaimer to anyone listening to this who wants to go to colombia just go mm-hmm. man just go but at the same time any anything that you hear in this podcast we're only talking about our personal experience mm-hmm. okay i'm not telling you it's the safest place in the world. But also, wherever you live mm-hmm. is not the safest place in the world either. 
anything could happen anywhere. So my yeah. advice is just go. Well, you, we were delivering coffees in the market and you heard gunshots. Like if you hang around yeah. weird places, you're going to end up in some trouble. It just happens. It like, just happens. Wrong place, wrong time. But our experience, bro, walking around, the people were so warm and oh, friendly. So friendly. They yeah. just wanted to help you out. They're just happy you were here. Yeah. They were just like, yo, we need you. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for coming. Like what make, what made you choose Columbia? Like all this, but we'll get into that. Like was our first few days we're traveling around. And I remember this, this guy's not afraid to talk to anyone, which is a superpower. We have our friend. Like now we made a good friend just off of a, Hey, I'm Deepak. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Who are you? This is our next door neighbor on a balcony. His name's Diego. Shout out Diego, bro. He's smoking a, a cigarette. And I come out too. He's like, where are you guys from? We're from Canada. He's like, one sec, I got something for you. You guys are going to love this. Goes back in his apartment, comes back out, brings out a baggie of weed. And he's like, you guys are Canadians. I know you. You're going to like this shit. This stuff, man. It was so funny because it was one of those like, you're out on a balcony. Picture you're out on a balcony and you look to your right and you see someone just smoking a cig and you're just like, I could tell this guy's cool. Mm-hmm. I could just tell this guy's not weird. I could mm-hmm. tell he's cool. So I literally just say, "Yo, what's up, man? How you doing?" Mm-hmm. I'm Deepak, and he he says in his like Colombian accent, "Hey, bro, how you doing? Yeah. Oh, you're from Canada." I'm like, "Yeah, man, we're from Canada." And he's like, "Oh, yeah, yeah." It's kind of like so lucky that he st- sp- spoke English. Seriously, and look, I, I won't lie. Like uh, most Colombians uh, do speak yeah. it. They just don't speak it. Yeah. They don't use it. It's mm-hmm. like one of those things. They yeah. got it in their back pocket mm-hmm. and they actually feel like uh, a lot of them, they mm-hmm. feel nervous yeah. speaking it because they're always speaking Spanish. It's yeah. like, imagine if you know French mm-hmm. and you don't speak it often yeah. and you got to pull it out. Yeah, yeah. And you're just like, ah, oh, like I don't. It's, uh, it's like, oh, bonjour. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but basically getting into it a bit. So basically Diego was an absolute bro. Mm-hmm. He, we met up with him. We had mm-hmm. some drinks with him and stuff. Mm-hmm. We met his amazing amazing dog Mm -hmm. and we just we got to know we got to know diego (laughs) and and, uh he took us out for a hike one day Mm -hmm. we went out for this amazing hike he 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 took all of off a conversation just off a conversation he's like yeah bro i'll take you to the mountains come with me and and we'll we'll go for this hike and we'll do this thing and Mm -hmm. we go up this mountain and you know he goes with his dog off leash and yeah he's got this whole hiking group he drives he drove us yeah he drove us and and like it was crazy like he had no reason to really trust us no you know what i mean like but that's the thing about travel Mm -hmm. and coming back to it it just opens your you're just less afraid to do that yeah whereas at home i find when you're just when you're just at home and Mm -hmm. you're just in your own element yeah you're always just a little bit reserved you're comfortable you're You're comfortable comfortable. and you're like i don't need more friends i got all the friends i need i don't uh, you, you know what you're gonna add baggage to my life yeah you know whereas when when it's travel it's it's a different context and so diego shout out to you man you're an absolute bro he showed us around we went for some amazing hikes we got beautiful views of bogota you know we learned about um, his hiking group mm-hmm. and we learned about actually some of the dangers because mm-hmm. we're not going to sit here and tell you that yeah. Colombia is completely yeah. danger free yeah right there are you can put yourself in a bad situation you, you, if you you're just stupid. gotta you just gotta be vigilant be That's vigilant say. make friends who are locals mm-hmm. be smart about it don't mm-hmm. be don't be just don't be an idiot yeah don't just go out to a, like a random club and by yourself don't walk down an alleyway late at night like take a uber man like that's a take just take a uber it's safe you don't even need to speak english like, yeah i mean man. i mean speak spanish you need, don't even need to speak spanish like. just be cool honestly like I, that's that's the big thing there but you know go, going zooming out a bit and talking mm-hmm. about colombia man we had such an amazing time meeting mm-hmm. so many amazing people and mm-hmm. diego really introduced us to a lot of yeah. you know, friends of his yeah angela valeria angel, angel. yeah angel and like uh we, we these are the people that you know um diego introduced yeah. us to mm-hmm. and we got to kind of party together mm-hmm. and you know we learned how to dance oh man to, like, like this is what i never really appreciated in my life like i like to dance but like you know all the dances like they're just like you know all the classic ones but this is like dancing dancing dancing, dancing. this is where we had a couple of 4 a.m nights we danced till 4 a.m it's like well we have to teach you we that's to- my favorite thing about colombian culture i think mm-hmm. is the 
the women mm-hmm. they they just want yeah they want they dance. want to dance and they want you to dance it's electric and it's not about it's not like it's not about it's not sexual it's not a sexual thing it's no. literally a dance mm-hmm. and it's like connecting yeah. and like getting to know each other and moving your hips mm-hmm. and your body and rhythm yeah. to the music just and make friends you have drinks you listen to music with they Ag- kinda, <laughs> agar, see ya mucho agar <laughs> and, you know they dance we dance but yeah. we show them our music too and it's like an exchange of Culture. of cu- of cultures like we, this is where we're from this is our music and we had a couple of nights like that but then we zooming out a little bit more is now we we're not sightseers you and me yeah. we we want to make friends we want to make local friends but like it's kind of like our uh, your friend manuela she sent us a whole itinerary that like, you got to go here shout out to manuela you're the biggest g out there yeah. like she yeah. sent us where you got to go here you yeah. got to go there she like, told us the best places mm-hmm. to hit up shout out to manuela barcenas mm-hmm. i hope <laughs> i say that right uh, and we went out to andres dc yeah like, she told us go here in bogota here mm-hmm. go here here's here's the places to avoid and mm-hmm. like, you know go to these salt mines and yeah. look we could sit here for hours yeah. bro and just go oh into every God. detail about this trip but kind of just talking about like some of the highlights man mm-hmm. we did go to some really cool places yeah. where we got to experience like you know the salt mines yeah. salt mine zipacaria yeah zipacaria which was like the greatest coffee we had a coffee shop and yep but like i'm not a religious guy i don't know if you like we're spiritual in a way but you're we're not very we're not we're not super religious. religious we're not super religious but you know what we really do appreciate mm-hmm. spirituality and mm-hmm. religion yeah but it's uh, it's also art it and, was so yeah, much art man we're, we're going into these caves mm-hmm carved out of these salt mines like yeah. super super deep i know this podcast called it's not that deep but mm-hmm. bro we went Man, deep, deep that day taking bro. two guys that just said we're leaving our country but now we're immersing ourselves in the culture yeah man and and that's one thing that like you know a special part about this podcast is that you know i think we're i'm gonna talk about this in the intro and stuff as well but I, we're gonna edit in the visuals yeah so people can kind of see so mm-hmm. If you're listening to this right now and only listening to this, I actually really urge you to go and watch the YouTube version of it. Yeah. And I'll have the links in the description of this podcast and everything. But if you are watching it right now, you're going to really enjoy some of these photos and videos and content mm-hmm. that we got of, it's great, man. of the sightseeing. Yeah. And you and I are not videographers. No. We're not great content creators. We, but we knew this was kind of like a special moment in history. Like not many people are doing this right now. And we just kind of got it. I feel like we kind of had an obligation to show everybody like w- what was going on. Exactly. And honestly, it was kind of nice because there was no foreigners. It was nice because during COVID, I mean, just like you said, there were not many foreigners. Mm-hmm. There were mostly, you know, Colombians and yeah. we got to meet a lot of them and it mm-hmm. was great. But the, I think the big part of that was that with that, I, I think that we got to experience Colombia kind of raw. Mm-hmm. unfortunately yeah it was still covid and yeah. there were still a lot of restrictions and things were still closed and mm-hmm. whatnot but we made the best out of our experience and then yeah. you know go, kind of like fast yeah. forwarding a little bit in Bogota, yeah. we also then uh went and saw Monserrate, mm-hmm. which is the you kind of like one of the highest points in Bogota, yeah. where there's this really nice statue. You're in church. the clouds. It's like what? It's a really old church, and yeah. you get to see the views, and people are going there with their significant other, their dates. Like it's very romantic spot to be with your cousin. It's perfect. And <laughs> perfect. <laughs> No, no, but, nothing, nothing like you just putting your hand around me yeah, and like, so, oh hola, my papi, God. Papa, papi, what a nice view. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I remember I uh, I needed to see everything and I needed to do as much as I could because yeah. it was it was like I, I may never come back. I don't know which right. we are going back. Yeah. But uh, man, it was so so special because we stayed. We were there uh, like in the afternoon, but then when the sun starts to set, then you can kind of see the the beauty the beauty of the city and Thir- the magnitude Thir- 13 million people about approximately in this Bogota is stupid mm-hmm. large man it's got the population of the GTA in this one city mm-hmm. and it's so vast and you know what you're going to see here in this clip mm-hmm. of of, of Monserrate yeah. you know i will give you some credit here publicly mm-hmm. me personally yeah. i'm not i don't care about 
uh, sightseeing and stuff like that. Yeah. And I am very much the type of person that like, I do want to go see the site. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not like anti sightseeing, <laughs> yeah. but I'm pretty over it pretty quickly. I'm like, cool, mm -hmm. let's go. We got some drone footage. Yeah. We got some, we had a great experience, yeah. but my battery drains and I'm just like, it's time to go. It's okay. And I was not letting this guy. I'm like, yo, we, <laughs> we are staying and we are watching the sunset. Cause I know this is about to be one of like, one of the crazy experiences ever. And this place is what, 35, 4,000 feet high? Like, I, I'm, don't quote me on this. Yeah. Like, but it's high up. It's high up. You could see the clouds. Like, you're above the clouds, basically. And you're looking down and you see this vast, amazing city. We took a cable car up. Mm -hmm. It was so nice. And, bro, you were right. It was yeah. so beautiful at night. And I'll sit here and look, I'm, look, I'll be the first to tell you I was wrong. Yeah, it's okay. It was so nice to see that at night. I don't get many of them. Yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, that was one of those where I was like, "Look, this is dope." But look, I don't want to bore people here on the podcast and mm -hmm. talk about every no, single. We don't need to they, detail of, see. of this trip. But one of the most important things that we did end up doing is meeting up with Columbia Frank. Mm -hmm. So while we were in Bogota, we actually. Uh, that's also the power of conversation the just power starting of conversation with. so we actually met up with the uh, columbia frank shout out to um, frank he's he's got a youtube channel where it's dedicated to all things columbia travel right and uh he's a swiss dude mm -hmm. super intense love this dude <laughs> and he knows his shit when it comes to colombia right definitely so knows his stuff he man. knows his we stuff we met up with coffee with this guy we saw la candelaria yeah, exactly we went to a really nice district in in uh, bogota and we kind of became friends mm -hmm. man uh, colombia frank really understood what we wanted and i told him directly like yeah. look we want to discover the coffee in Region. colombia yeah and this kind of brings us to deep drip a little bit which yeah. i think now is yeah, now's, now's definitely a good now's time. Now's probably a, a, as yeah, good yeah. a time as ever to kind of dive into Deep Drip a little bit. Of, yeah. Let's talk about Deep Drip, bro. Yeah. So basically, you and I were bored one day. Yeah. Kind of just chilling yeah. in my apartment. I came back from studio. work. This is December. Yeah. November, end of November. I was about, this is out of season, about to end work. And I was just tired. Like, I remember I was tired. I was fed up. I was like, I'm so tired right now. I'm done with this. Like, I need to do something for myself. Like, I'm so, the pandemic is weighing on you. And what happened? We're just like, hey, I, I know a guy. So basically, here's how here's how I I think it really went down. Like, we I knew that you really wanted to kind of do something more than what you were just currently doing with school and stuff. And mm -hmm. I I did too. Yeah, I always wanted to have my own product. Mm -hmm. And kind of rewinding a little bit and kind of setting the stage on this yeah. a little bit. You and I, like what people don't know is like you and I were so close and mm -hmm. that we've been grabbing coffee together. That's yep. been our kind of main pastime in this boring city yep. is sitting and grabbing coffee yep. at different places mm -hmm. around the city. Quater, Happy Go, yeah. like we go around Westboro. Yeah. Yeah. We'd go to a bunch of different places around the city, sit down and just grab a really good cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. And so I think coffee was something that already brought us together i mm -hmm. think coffee was something that we were kind of passionate about we were super against just like mm -hmm. main brand um you know tim hortons and like so the starbucks done, and all this and yeah. it's just like why are these the only options you know out here and why mm -hmm. do i have to go to some hipster district mm -hmm. to get a good cup of joe mm -hmm. and like that was frustrating for us but we never really thought and look to each other like, hmm. let's start a coffee company. No. But what basically happened is, um, shout out to James Rankin. I had mm -hmm. James on my podcast yeah. and we were talking about it. And uh, I don't know if it was you or me or whoever brought up the idea, but it was like, yo, like, let's just start a coffee company. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I know a guy. Mm -hmm. I know James. And mm -hmm. we had even talked about it yeah. on the podcast, <laughs> yeah. live during the yeah. podcast. I'm like, yo, I'd love to start yeah. a coffee company one day mm -hmm. and i just said that yeah. i was kind of talking it's shit. like it's like the the perfect storm kind of exactly it's like perfect storm and and you know he's like i could set you up yeah and i was like i yeah. kind of took that literally i yeah. know he didn't like mean it like that in the sense yeah. but but he did mm -hmm. and so we set up a meeting with mm -hmm. him and i'm mm -hmm. just like look i just want to know pricing and details mm -hmm. and yada 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 and long story short you and i actually went and started a coffee yeah. company we called started deep trip yeah we came up with the name 
like we had a brainstorming session like after work yeah like take it take it in like, yeah this is really quick we're like what do we do like yeah. what do we call, what do we like, call it and we were yeah. like uh you know deep caffeination no yeah like coffee coffee culture yeah like you're just yeah. coming up with it you know you throw a lot of spaghetti at the wall you know, and you're like brought you? out the notepad and yeah, everything guys. we, we yeah. brought out the notepad and, and i think there was the one name mm-hmm. and it just we couldn't stop saying it mm-hmm. deep drip like, coffee deep drip. that sounds great it actually sounds good yeah deep drip yeah because it means more than one thing yeah, you and yeah, i just start like, buzzing oh. we start going crazy we're like a creative ah, session a real creative it's, not, session. it's more than coffee mm-hmm. it's for creators and yeah we, we came up with the brand principles right there but basically you and i then actually because we're apes and mm-hmm. we aped it and we went and <laughs> actually we actually went and started deep drip coffee so just to give you guys a little bit of a, a, a tutorial here we got we got we got our logo here that we actually designed on our on our four bags so we got the legero legero roast so yeah, we all based right. all of our um, all of our our coffee names here off italian names so we really like you know italian culture and stuff so we got the legero mm-hmm. roast here which is yeah. our light roast um really kind of chocolatey and 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 i really like the legero roast mm-hmm. um it's a solid one um uh, it's not our most popular mm-hmm. roast but it it's definitely like if you're into kind of more blonde a little bit lighter coffee mm-hmm. this is this is your go-to gives you that most caffeine exactly i'll let you talk about our scuro oh i think our scuro our scuro is kind of like our, our favorite one honestly uh we wanted to we did so many taste testings that it had to be absolutely perfect to our liking yeah and it's just it's dark it's smooth yeah this is it was just so good and you could tell it was just a little bit different it added quality this is what you want out of your morning coffee like if you're yeah. already doing things with quality might as well do it with your coffee man. exactly and that's that was our big like kind of founding principles it's like look it's not just coffee you could get that at timmy's and stuff we're not com- we're not you know competing with your folders or your maxwell house or whatever this is really good coffee and i'm not just saying that because we own the company no. try it like if you try it like and you don't like it like honestly like i will pay you money like (laughs) because zero people have have tried it and not absolutely fall in love with it Mm -hmm. i'm that confident in the coffee itself um and then we got our mezzo roast here this Mm -hmm. is actually my personal favorite yeah i I know you said the scuro but for me Mm -hmm. i really love a medium roast mezzo in italian is medium obviously scuro was dark Mm -hmm. um so the thing about the mezzo roast for me is it emulates one of my favorite coffee uh shops here in ottawa and and i gotta give a big shout out to equator coffee it's still one of my favorite actual coffee shops now Mm -hmm. At the time of recording this podcast, mm-hmm. you and I don't have a physical location. We don't. No. Deep Drip is not a franchise or anything no. like that. But who knows where where this will go, right? But the coffee itself is pure. I love it. It's amazing. You know, we got like a lot of mix of like Colombian, Brazilian, mm-hmm. Ethiopian, a lot of blends yep. of like the perfect type and, and the roasts. And we also have our espresso roast, which <laughs> people absolutely love. Funny enough, I don't have an espresso machine. It, it's really good. It's really good with a latte. It, it's amazing in a latte. I don't have an espresso machine, so I don't drink the espresso that much. But my friends who do swear by it. Um, they they only drink this now. So, you know, not to make this a deep drip ad, but I do feel like it was important to kind of yeah um, touch on those little subjects because this is what really leads into the Columbia trip. Exactly. So going back to kind of talking about Columbia, Frank. Mm hmm. It was very important to talk to Columbia Frank yep. about, hey, we want to discover what, what what's the coffee process like. Yeah. What is everything? I want to know how it goes from the plant to the cup. I want to know every mm-hmm. single part of the coffee process. And I, I know Columbia is famous for coffee. Yep. So I want to know every step of the process. I, I want to know where to go. You tell us everything. Put together a trip for us. And mind you, I've traveled a lot of my life. I have never used a travel agent before. And technically, Columbia Frank owns a travel agency. Yeah, uh, Pelicanus. Pelicanus. Shout out to Pelicanus. 
And shout out to Columbia Frank. Mm-hmm. And he, he put together this incredible trip for oh, us man. where we went down to Pasto, mm-hmm. um, which is south of Colombia. It's near the, uh, I think, Ecuador and Peru border. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Super south. And, and you can see it in the people. They look different. They're mm-hmm. kind of a little bit more indigenous looking, yep. a lot shorter. Yeah. And and super friendly small towns. And, and we had a tour guide. And I mm-hmm. thought that that was actually essential for us because... Yep. We don't speak Spanish no. and we're meeting farmers and mm-hmm. people who probably don't speak a lot of English directly. Yeah. And so it was really important that, you know, Columbia Frank's role to set this all up for us. And maybe you want to talk about that on your side a bit. Yeah. So honestly, this is probably one of the, the most surreal things you'll ever see in your life. Uh, and I swear by that, like, and we've been to India too, but yeah. this was breathtaking. We, Miss our flight, but we don't need to get into that. But we we get there, we meet we meet Jorge. He picks us up at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we, maybe maybe yeah. we could just touch on it. Yeah. But um some poor decisions were made the night before and we had let's just say we had a six AM flight. Yeah. And uh we didn't make that flight. We just missed it. We so we had to take it. the next flight. Yeah. But you know what? It sucked, but we made it happen. You know, we got we got there. We got there begrudgingly a little bit, but as soon as we landed, we were looking outside the the windows of the plane. I'm like, where am I right yeah. now? Like, I don't even know where I am. Dude, we like, were we were flying one of those look like, mm-hmm. like like propeller type mm-hmm. planes, mm-hmm. and we were going in mountains, mm-hmm. and I was like a little bit on edge, yeah. man. I, I don't was know like, about th- you. This this pilot was <laughs> he, he was, was going. Fun, he's like, bro. He's, <laughs> he's, yeah, he's like literally <laughs> skiing to <through> these mountains, <laughs> bro. He's having way too much fun. He's having fun, but th- this airport is on top of a mountain. Yeah, and this is where a lot of the volcanoes are, and we'll yep. get into this. Yep. But the, this is where a lot of the farming is done. So yeah. Jor- Jorge, one of the nicest people. Shout out to Jorge's man. Jorge, I've ever the nicest person. He was our tour guide. I've ever probably met. He picks us so up. Nice. We're driving through the mountains. We're a little late. We're off schedule. He has to show us around because we're on schedule. We got to see this. We got to see that. Yeah. So, well, we, but actually, we're late. We're we're late. We missed a flight, so we're like four hours behind mm-hmm. this extremely scheduled yeah. weekend. In Inter- itinerary, and yeah, we're tired. Yeah, we're uh, we're but honestly, everything was all good <laughs> because the sun was out, the window was down. We're going through the mountains. We see there's no cell Jorge's, reception. Jorge's Jorge's giving us every single detail. Like you see this. This is where this comes from. You see that. That's what this is. And yeah. uh, I don't remember every single detail. But we're driving through the mountains. It's very windy, and we eventually we get into the town. We what what did we see? We we yeah, get some so, food. So yeah. so yeah, we get into this town. Mm-hmm. I think it was uh it was Buasaco or, yeah, or something Buasaco, like that. Yeah. And uh and basically the first thing that we do is we get some food and, mm-hmm. and some coffee. Yeah, we and had us. uh we had some um Ban- bandeja paisa. Bandeja paisa, but we also had uh, I think we had chicharron. Yeah, we had chicharron. chicharron. We had we, we we had some local Colombian food, yeah. which is amazing. And it's the like local this coffee shop, thick bacon mm-hmm. with like rice mm-hmm. and like more meat. beans, everything, and some eggs. The best just, meal. That was just everything that you want in mm-hmm. a hearty meal. Yeah. You know, it, it's yeah. not the typical American mm-hmm. food. It's mm-hmm. not pizza and burgers yeah. and just this carb infested cheese fest. No. It was like so meat. Good. And carbs mm-hmm. and fat, mm-hmm. just everything you need in Sobra. <laughs> Shout out Sobra, but but an actual like real good food, mm-hmm. right? And so basically, man, we got to show a picture of this. But the view of the cafe that oh we were in, oh my god, man, we're just looking in the paradise. Mm-hmm. And so the next thing is we get this absolute amazing tour of what the coffee production mm-hmm. process looks like in in Buasaco mm-hmm. and everything and look we can't sit here for hours and tell no. you every single thing that we did we'll but just show you did, we'll show you some of the videos and some of the footage but basically we got to see what it's like you know from a farmer mm-hmm to the actual cup mm-hmm. of coffee that they they sell to Starbucks and mm-hmm. a lot of the companies around the world mm-hmm. they sell this coffee to and it's rated 
it's especial. It's like yeah. the best coffee that you could get in Colombia. Fair Columbia. trade, everything. Fair trade, organic, all that. Checks all those boxes that everyone <laughs> everyone wants with their coffee, right? And, that. That, and it's also what we want with our coffee. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? We don't want it to be mm-hmm. coffee that's like bottom of the barrel stuff. We want of the, the barrel, absolute top quality. We want top shelf, top quality stuff. And that's what we found in Colombia. Mm-hmm. And I think it was a really important business trip, mm-hmm. to be honest, for yeah. us. Well, it was fun, but it was also business. It was business. You and I were mm-hmm. on a business trip, and yeah. as much as we were having a great time, and yeah. like we were seeing a lot of cool stuff, like mm-hmm. this was straight business, and it was mm-hmm. really important that we did this because mm-hmm. the next day we got to meet the you know the yeah. farmer. We met Juan Pablo and the and his Juan fam- Pablo and his family. They mm-hmm. showed us every step of the production process, mm-hmm. taste testing. They, everything. They, they showed us the the taste testing, how the coffee. You know all the different mm-hmm. formats of how you drink coffee from a French press to an Aero mm-hmm. press to a you know normal brew to mm-hmm. an espresso to like eight different ways. Uh, Japanese siphon. So everything. many different methods. The, this of- is the same coffee bean, just in different ways, and you get the different notes and you get the different flavors, and it, you kind of it opens up your senses a little. Bit. Oh my god, it was like wine tasting, mm-hmm. but like on steroids because mm-hmm. I was so surprised mm-hmm. that like the method of how you drink coffee. Yeah. You can have the exact same bean grind everything, mm-hmm. but just the method of how you drink it can completely change the taste, mm-hmm. the flavor profile. Every single part of the coffee experience mm-hmm. is is different how how you drink it right yeah and we got to see that firsthand and, and shout out again to columbia frank for mm-hmm. setting this all up it was he, amazing he trip. knew what we wanted mm-hmm. he made it happen and then the next day we got to see you know we got to go to juan pablo shout out juan pablo mm-hmm. we went to his farm and yeah their family was so hospitable. They mm-hmm. showed us around their whole entire farm. Yeah. They even fed us lunch, they a farmer's lunch. A, a nice, really good farmer's lunch. They, Club Colombia. They gave us some beer, some Club Colombia. And we walked around and we saw their farm and the yield was so crazy mm-hmm. and they were just doing so well. And like, I just, I actually, this mm-hmm. is embarrassing, but I didn't know that coffee came in like a plant that looks like a cherry. Mm-hmm. Like it's like a fruit almost, yeah. you know, with like a little white, slimy bean in it yeah yeah and it that's was... what you then take shave down mm-hmm. then you roast that then mm-hmm. that's what you do you grind that and then you yeah. there's just so much involved in in your cup of coffee that you're drinking and i you think i just my, don't know it i didn't realize i felt stupid my biggest takeaway like i've never actually looked at coffee the same i always like in the back of my mind now i'm thinking of the whole entire supply chain from the beginning mm-hmm. and the beginning and i'm just like this is this is crazy how much Someone has to pick each mm-hmm. bean, yeah, off a off a plant at a certain altitude, mind you. Like there's different altitudes, like twenty five hundred feet. You take this certain bean at this certain time, and uh, it doesn't get cold. It just gets a little cool. So the humidity with the soil makes it rich because it's vol- volcanic uh, yeah. ash everywhere. Makes the ground very, very fertile for yeah. coffee growth, and it that's what makes it good. Like eighty five notes and above. Yeah exactly but look we're we're closing in on an hour mm-hmm. already on yeah. this podcast wow. so i do think that it's time to kind of talk about the mm-hmm. rest of this trip look mm-hmm. if i if i'm just to summarize anything about all the mm-hmm. coffee and everything that yeah. we did look Busaco, narino mm-hmm. um pasto mm-hmm. that whole area in colombia mm-hmm. was absolutely incredible mm-hmm. we got to see everything that we really wanted to see in terms of the coffee production yeah. process. And we got to develop a relationship with the farming family that I think, yeah. look, I don't want to, I don't want to speak out of turn and yeah. I, I don't want to jinx it or anything, but yeah. I think that we're going to do a lot of great business together. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm really excited to be one of the first companies in Canada to yeah. bring this Colombian coffee here. And yeah. I can't wait for you guys to taste it because oh, it's just, it's special. So, it, it is special. It's special. We went there. We saw it. We did it. We did it. And mm-hmm. we felt it and we tasted it. And we saw the blood, sweat, and tears mm-hmm. that goes into this coffee, man. And it's it was really humbling. And mm-hmm. and you know, we're gonna edit in some footage here mm-hmm. and, and I hope you guys get to kind of see what the, what from a drone angle, mm-hmm. like like 
what the vastness of these yeah. mountains look like we had because raw honey like everything they I, gave I, us I, I don't think I don't think I've ever been more at peace mm -hmm. than when I was in those mountains with no reception no. just with these farmers I honestly felt reset I felt great relaxed but we do have to move on mm -hmm. here man uh, we yeah did, this isn't even half the trip this isn't even this like is a like quarter like in. we can't we can't go into everything mm -hmm. here but I do have to kind of move on to mm -hmm. kind of the next the next city mm -hmm. here in Colombia <laughs> you know we went to was Medellin mm -hmm. and look I will tell you, I'll be the first oh, to tell you, man. Medellin is my favorite city that oh, I man. went to in Colombia. Of course, and we were in lockdowns, mind you. So Medellin is the city of eternal spring. And I know that Medellin has a reputation mm -hmm. from Pablo Escobar yeah. and this, that, and the other thing. We're not going to get into all that. That's we We just straight up don't have the knowledge or... We're not speaking on any of, of the history of Colombia. We're too ignorant. Yeah. All right. We straight up, we weren't there. We don't know. And our knowledge is narcos. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to decide not to speak on that topic. But no, no need to. Nothing needs to be said. But Medellin like now is the digital nomad capital yep. of South America. Can't wait to get back. It is. It is absolutely beautiful mm -hmm. the weather is always like 25 degrees i honestly we were in lockdowns but we we're going to the gym every day gym was we, open gym was outdoors gym was outdoors that's the one Dude, thing i love rooftop bars mm -hmm. rooftop everything yeah the vibes of medellin are on parallel yeah, look i love bogota yeah. we met some great friends mm -hmm. there it was a great time the problem with bogota mm -hmm still cold yeah it's still a little cold if you're trying to escape if you if you want heat bogota is not your city because look bogota is like canada in the fall yeah it can get a little chilly at night you gotta you better wear a hoodie mm -hmm. you, you, you little need a jacket hoodie, but everyone dresses really nice that's the guy, one thing I gotta they all say. dress really nice and look but kind of getting into medellin a bit man like i love that city mm -hmm. so much and and our spanish teacher mm -hmm. erica erica shout out to erica she actually happened to be moving to Medellin yeah. right when we went to Medellin. Mm -hmm. So she was in Bogota giving mm -hmm. us Spanish lessons. Yeah. Uh, estoy aprendiendo un poquito. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then we we actually go to Medellin. We meet up with her. She takes us to these cool places, mm -hmm. Click Clack Hotel, this, mm -hmm. that, and the other thing. We have some really fun nights. And, yeah. you know, unfortunately, the timing of when we went was yeah. there were lockdowns mm -hmm. and the weekends and evenings were a little bit shut down yeah. and closed. We, we made the best of it. There was curfew. We made the best of it. We still did what we could do at that point. And we honestly, it was Erica kind of helped made our, make our trip. We made some friends. We met Sophia and then we met a bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another exactly. Canadian from Toronto. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, one thing led to another and mm -hmm. like we then also went to cali yeah we ended up in cali weekend trip we did a weekend trip in cali and that was a whole nother time and look my highlight of cali was mm -hmm. meeting up with my boy santiago uh, so santiago is this one is one of the craziest stories ever and, mm -hmm. and i gotta tell it because it wasn't supposed to happen it was one of those like in life those chance encounters just the whole city, we actually knew this because Medellin was shut down, So, mm -hmm. but we went to Cali mm -hmm. when it was shut down as well. Mm -hmm. But we thought that we'd have like a Friday night, yeah. like maybe a, like a Monday or yeah. Sunday. We got a penthouse. Yeah, we got a really nice place. Mm -hmm. It looked like a drug dealer's palace. <laughs> and, and, and we spent the weekend and it was a great time. But the problem was everything was closed. Yeah. Co this covid was at an all-time high and mm -hmm. look again we don't want to get into all that yeah. but basically you talk about it because uh the, talk about how we met uh santiago so what happened is we we go out mm -hmm. one night we we're looking for a place to go out and uh, we're having a hard time finding anywhere that's open mm -hmm. and i guess i posted it on twitter or something that yeah. i'm in i'm in cali yeah ig I, or, or instagram or something yeah. and my boy santiago hits me up and I had already been talking to this guy on WhatsApp, just, mm -hmm. just like connecting with a with a homie. Yeah, I knew he was Colombian. Yeah, but I didn't know he was in Colombia, yeah. let alone in Cali. Mm -hmm. He hits me up. He's like, "Yo, bro, I heard you're in Cali." I'm like, yeah, bro, I am. I didn't have data at the time. Oh man. So so Siraj had to hotspot hot spot. me. <laughs> So that I could message him while we're out. And I'm like, yo, bro, I didn't know you're in Cali. Come meet us. Yeah. Bring some girls. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bring some girls. Let's have a party. Let's let's, let's have a little up. party. Santiago, God bless his soul. He's like, no problem. See you soon. A couple hours later, mm-hmm. he comes to our penthouse, brings a bunch of people. Yeah, we meet his friends. Yeah, we meet a bunch of people. We have a great night. This is the first time I met this dude. This is a Twitter homie. This mm-hmm. is a dude I know from a a group that we're a part of. Yeah. Shout out to Cape. Learning about sales and business and stuff, right? Yeah. He just happened to be part of the same group. Yeah. And we had just exchanged a few messages in the past. Santiago, Santiago and I became close, man. Mm-hmm. You mean we became close? We became yeah. close. And, and I was just so happy for it because he got to show us like... Yeah. Cali's all about mm-hmm. what you know despite we the circumstances a couple lunches man he was so hospitable but this is like what you'll find in Colombia is that everyone's so hospitable that they're willing to just show you around be your friend like it's like they treat they treat you like family but honestly we, we <laughs> Santiago just texted me. yeah Sa- <laughs> yeah Sa- Santiago is one of our brothers now yeah and Santiago I still talk to him uh, we talk we FaceTime once a week we send memes like mm-hmm. we you know like Santiago's a bro and look Bro, we are we are we are like over time on this podcast. Yeah, I, I, I love this. We could sit and talk about Colombia all day. Mm-hmm. Cali was a vibe. Mm-hmm. Absolutely loved that city. Mm-hmm. We didn't get to experience it right. I'm no. going back. No, we're going back. I'm going For back, sure. and I'm going to experience Cali correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when it's open and when we can really see what the salsa scene is like. Mm-hmm. What you know, what what it's like, the nightlife, everything, mm-hmm. right? But the next thing that I really want to talk oh, about. It is is Guatape, mm-hmm. and this is a place outside of Medellin mm-hmm. that we were able to make happen. Yeah, and it's a crazy story, mm-hmm. and and we won't get into it today oh, on this podcast. Oh man, I don't know if we it's should. Such a crazy story, honestly, man. I feel like they need to hear every single thing. Not every single thing, but <sighs> at least like they we, they need to. This touch might up be a on long this. one. It's gonna be long. Sorry, one. Ahmed. Yeah. All right, so Guatape, bro. Man. We gotta talk about it because. <sighs> <laughs> and this is probably the highlight of the trip to me honestly so basically what happens is we've got a bunch of we got a pocket of friends at this point from mm-hmm. different areas of colombia mm-hmm. right um in bogota is where mm-hmm. we made the most volume of friends yeah and santiago as well mm-hmm. and, and down in cali and yeah. just a bunch of people and, and our spanish teacher mm-hmm. erica but these people don't know each other no so the crazy part is about this story is that basically what how did it all come to fruition so the day before we we're about to leave medellin yeah and we had a great time but it's time to leave and we're planning to go to guatape for a weekend and then after we're gonna go to cartagena and we went on a pablo escobar tour yeah. the night before we went to guatape but take him taken a, in a place everything was on lockdown mm-hmm. so this is where the ape energy comes in we asked the guy on our pablo escobar tour we were like hey man do you have a van because we already booked the airbnb for gotape yeah and we planned this we coordinated this with all our friends on whatsapp we made a group yeah we did everything that's so true and we didn't have a ride there that night the day before we're supposed to be there and we did not have a ride we tried everything we tried with erica we're like yo please use your colombian magic to to find someone to take us there a taxi anything. yeah and, and just for a bit of context so basically what happened was during this time everything was closed yeah. so the reason why we wanted to go away for a weekend mm-hmm. from medellin is because the lockdowns are in effect mm-hmm. thursday night yeah throughout monday mm-hmm. So those lockdowns basically mean that you can't even leave the city. Like no. police are are able to kind of question you for being anywhere yeah. during a quarantine, right? Yeah. We're in a foreign land. We don't know about all this stuff. We, we don't need to get in that trouble type we, of trouble. We don't gotta we don't gotta push any buttons, but basically we're apes <laughs> and we ape this. Mm-hmm. And basically the game plan was, hey, we wanna put together a little trip. Yeah. And it was actually our Spanish teacher who told us. Yeah. Erica, shout out to Erica. Yeah. She told us about this place called Guatape, mm-hmm. where she's been, right? Yeah, we need a finca. And we need a finca, which is apparently like, it's like a they describe it like a cottage mm-hmm. farm vibe where you can go out yeah. and, and party with there's like a you know, pool, mm-hmm. hot tub, whatever. Like yeah, you yeah. can just go and. But hot, this hot place, tub. Guatape, was so beautiful, and mm-hmm. we were just like, we have to go. Yeah. And so I just. 
honestly, like I will say that you took I, the I, reins, I, man. This I, is all you. I, I just, me. I just made it happen. I'm just mm-hmm. like, look, you know what, man? Like, we gotta fucking get this. To, we gotta, do, we gotta go. Yeah. And so, I hit up. I think the order was, I hit up Santiago. Mm-hmm. He was in right away. Yeah, he booked his flight already that he, night. He booked his flight instantly, which was like, okay, this is happening. Yeah. Then after that, I hit up Angel, mm-hmm. Angela, mm-hmm. and Valeria, mm-hmm. and Diego, yeah. our friends from Bogota. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, Diego he got COVID. He got the COVID. He got the vid. He got the vid. He couldn't come or mm-hmm. he would have been there too. That would have been great. That would have been awesome. That's one of those. Uh, what what is? Yeah, exactly. But hey, we got <laughs> we got his Venezuelan actor friends to come out and mm-hmm. it was awesome. Mm-hmm. They came, mm-hmm. and then Fabiana, Fabiana Santiago's friend, mm-hmm. and then also Eric, our Spanish teacher. Mm-hmm. Now we won't bore you with all the details, but yeah. basically we had no ride there. Mm-hmm. No taxis are operating. All yeah. rental car agencies are closed. Mm-hmm. There's no bus. There's yeah. no train. Yeah. There's no way to get to this place. That's basically an hour and a half yeah. outside of Medellin. Yeah. So the night before, like you were saying, yeah, we were on a Pablo Escobar tour in Medellin, just going and seeing the Pablo Escobar sites. Yeah. Kind of embarrassing, but we had to do it. Yeah. We just had to. Saw the jail. You know, you had to. You had to. We're Come there. On. It's Come like, on. you know, you're not going to go. Anyways, like, yeah. look, we had to see it. But yeah. long story short, this dude actually pulled through with the van. We went to Guatape. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the proudest moments of my entire life. Oh, That's so good. We got all these people together that don't know each other, shouldn't even be friends. Some of them are Venezuelan. Some of them are, like, are from South Colombia. Some of them are from North Colombia. We only learned about the difference yeah. between a paisa mm-hmm. and, and, a, and a caliente and all mm-hmm. this stuff later. Yeah. We only learned about all this stuff I later. No I had no idea that there's even a regional, like, mm-hmm. not conflict, but like serious differences in way of life and yeah. thinking, right? Um, and so we we saw the jabs and mm-hmm. it was great. I was just so happy. Yeah. It was one of the we most. Got all these guys in a van and we pulled up. We took them all there. We pulled up. Our Airbnb worked out. Mm-hmm. We had a hot tub. Mm-hmm. The most amazing view mm-hmm. ever. You oh, guys are going to see this view. It's so beautiful so to good, this man. day. I'm longing for it. Oh, I'd love I to. It. I'm going to go back. I miss it so much. I think much. we're going to go back. No, we're going back. We're I going miss back. it so much that weekend. Honestly, this place is. Like heaven on earth. Magic. And I think the whole weekend Magic cost really. us like 150 bucks each. Yeah. It was it was just so great to be there. I don't understand. Like, I don't even know what to we say had a about butler it. I'm speechless. Going going out to the market, bringing mm-hmm. us everything that we needed. It was, it had like 10 bedrooms mm-hmm. with like a bunch of, you know, I had a kitchen. Mm-hmm. You know, the Latinas were cooking. Look, mm-hmm. I'm not sexist, but it was incredible to just see. Even Angel. Yeah, Angel was the cook. Angel they didn't was, even cook. Angel was cooking some amazing mm-hmm. stuff. Everyone was cooking, though. Yeah. In one way or another, yeah. everyone was it contributing. Was it was you a know? great friends weekend. It was amazing. It was nice. There were hammocks. And look, the long story short about this is just make friends while you travel. Mm-hmm. Make things happen. Don't let all of this you got to make ba- the best of your circumstances is what we're trying to Don't say. Don't make life stop you mm-hmm. from living life. Like, you know what I mean? Just go and do things. And look, the rest of our trip in Colombia was so fun. Mm-hmm. We had such a great time. We went to uh, Cartagena where mm-hmm. we went to Baru Islands mm-hmm. and we got to finally experience some ocean. Mm-hmm. And we got to really see a lot of different sides of Colombia. Mm-hmm. Now, we didn't see it all, and I don't think you'll ever see it all. No. But I think we got a really great experience for yeah. two and a half months in Colombia. Yeah. We got to learn about the coffee. Mm-hmm. We got to meet a lot of great friends, yeah. plan a lot of great seeds. We made some great friends. We made some great stories. We left some people behind. Yeah. And it was really hard, but it was honestly great and all in all. And and Colombia has lower cost of living. Mm-hmm. It's got the most beautiful women on the planet. Mm-hmm. It's got the best weather. Mm-hmm. It's safe. Yeah, it's safe, man. It you is don't safe. Need to worry. It is safe. I will. I will go and I will tell you. It is just as safe mm-hmm. as where you live. Yes. And overall, 
I do think that it is a great destination. It's great for digital nomads. Mm-hmm. Look, I was running my business the whole time yeah, while I was there. Cha- changed my life. It changed your life. And we got content. Mm-hmm. It, it, for it, days. The food is cheap. Mm-hmm. Like I could just go and keep listing the benefits. But here's how I'm going to end this podcast. Yeah. We're going back. Yeah. You uh, and I are going back yeah. to Colombia. January, January 1st. 1st of 2021. 2022. 2022. That actually sounds weird to say. January 1st of 2022. <laughs> we're starting the year on the right foot. Yep. And it, we're going back. And look, I just think the travel is important. Mm-hmm. You don't have to go to Colombia. You don't even have to leave it felt your like, country. It feels like a second home, honestly. It does, man. And we did all that during lockdown. Mm-hmm. Imagine what it's like when it's open, man. Oh, Look, I'm just really excited for the future, bro. Mm-hmm. I know this podcast has been going on for a hot minute now. Yeah, how long has it been? You know, it's been a while, but you know what, man? I, everyone's going to understand because they love the stories and mm-hmm. they know that we held back on a lot of them. Oh, man, we did. And like, This is barely scratching the this surface. This is barely scratching the surface, but look, I just want everyone to know that you know, Columbia was a vibe. Mm-hmm. We had a great time. You and I are going to do a part two of this podcast, yeah. which kind of goes into what we didn't cover today. Yeah. But I think it's, I think that if, if you're, if you're still listening, <laughs> so shout out to you. But if you're still listening at this point, I think the big message that I want to leave you with, and, I, and I'm sure my cousin wants mm-hmm. to leave you with is just get out of that comfort zone. Get out of the comfort zone. You know, you get, it's kind of like you got to dream a little bit. You know, it's not, it's never too far fetched. You just kind of, you just got to do it. Everyone doubted us. Everyone definitely did doubt us. Everyone said, "Ah, now though, in a pandemic, you guys don't have your shots. You guys didn't do this. (sighs) Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And we're just sitting there like, man, like, miss me with that bullshit. Yeah. So look. We could sit here for another five hours talking about every little story from our Columbia trip. But man, mm-hmm. like, I just want to ask you, is there anything you think that we, like you really want to tell listeners about this experience that 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 stuck with you? Um, honestly, what really stuck with me is kind of when we were in the mountains, like I'm really here right now. Like our kid from Orleans who never thought he'd really ever could have experienced something like that and we were having like fresh fruits and bananas from the trees and everything like my skin was glowing like we were healthy avocado like the size of my head like fruit food was amazing honestly it's just you gotta kind of get just get out of here you gotta go do something go just leave the country you gotta go explore that's all i gotta say and i think that's what deep drips all about Mm -hmm. I think that's our fundamental message too is like do shit. Do shit. Explore. Go be, see be the world. an outstanding person. Mm-hmm. Go do stuff that's a little bit different. Ape mm-hmm. it. Yeah. When when everyone's zigging, you zag. Exactly. When everyone goes left, you go right. Mm-hmm. And look, don't try to fit in. No. You and I don't That's actually one thing that yeah. I've really learned is I stopped caring what anyone tells me. Any advice. I don't care what you have to say. I'm gonna do it my way. I'll make the mistakes on my own. Don't tell me what what you think. I don't give a shit. Uh, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Look. But that's it. I don't think there's a better way to end this podcast, that's brother. It. I love you, man. Yep. More you know, adventures to come. A lot more adventures to come, man. Mm-hmm. Your family. Mm-hmm. You're my business partner. You're my brother. Yep. Deep trips going places. Mm-hmm. We're going places. Mm-hmm. And look, man. This is just first of many. Yeah. I'm glad we were able to do this podcast. We're going to yeah. do a part two and yeah. three and four and five. Yeah. yeah. Shout out if you subscribe for more <laughs> for more stories if you like them. Exactly. Seriously. Where can people find you on social media and stuff if uh, they're curious? Well, people can find me on IG at, at Siraj Bali 19. And if you like more Colombian content, well, you're going to be there in January. Yep. More coffee content at deeptrip.co. And if you want a bag, you'll see the link in the description. Exactly. www.deeptrip.co. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast, yep. brother. Uh, appreciate you so much, man. And uh, just remember, it's not that deep. <laughs>